All right, guys, how's it going? Jake here, and you're watching Dude Ranch DIY. Welcome back. If you watched my last video, I think it was number 90, this setup might look a little bit familiar. Um, if you remember back in the last video, I had a trailer load, um, a sure track dump trailer, a trailer load of apple brush from a little job that I had done pruning some apple trees. And we tested uh, the Woodmax MX8800 PTO driven wood chipper on all that gnarly, you know, tangly rat's nest of apple brush. And it did surprisingly well. Um, it did actually a lot better than I thought it was going to do, both in the quality of the chips and how easily you know, it fed into the, uh, the actual chipper itself. Today, um, I got a little bit more chipping that we're gonna do from another job. I had a few people request to see the chipper do some larger diameter stuff since all that apple brush was relatively small, maybe like two, maybe three inches at the most. Um, I do apologize for the wind, it's super windy, so I hope you can hear me. I am talking loud, but um, we got some considerably larger stuff from both the birch and sugar maple trees. So it's both much harder than apple, uh, you know, the little suckers, and it's gonna be a lot denser and much bigger diameter. So we're gonna push the Woodmax MX8800 to its limits today. I got a little tape measure. I'm gonna measure some of the pieces and show you guys, and then we're gonna stick them through the chipper and see how it does. Okay guys, so as I said before, um, I got some slightly larger pieces here. This is a piece of sugar maple. I'm gonna take the tape measure to it, and we got about seven and a quarter inches in that direction about six and a quarter inches in that direction. So this will go through the, the chipper with, I anticipate, you know, relative ease. Um, it is an eight inch capacity chipper. Um, here we got another piece that is about four and three quarter inches. We got another piece back here that is just like seven and a half, almost eight inches. It might be eight inches at this little, uh, you know, flare where another branch was coming out. And then we got all this smaller diameter um, white birch, which is, uh, you know, nice stuff. It's a shame that we have to chip it, but we're gonna chip it up because I have no use for it. Um, then we got a couple more larger pieces of the sugar maple. And then in the very front of the trailer on the bottom, we have some really stone dead pieces that, you know, don't even have any bark on them. So those should be like the hardest, most dense wood that we have to chip here today. And we'll see how the chipper does with, uh, you know, with that stuff. So I'm gonna fire up the tractor and we're gonna to get to chipping. So I did wanna point out before I start up the chipper, I mentioned in the last video how this is a hydrostatic feed um, and I didn't get a good close up view, but here you can see both, if it'll focus, both the reverse and forward speeds, um, you know, ranging from one to 10. I did a little research and I believe at one, it'll feed, you know, in the forward direction, it'll feed one foot per minute into the uh you know into the the disc of the chipper and at 10 in theory it'll be feeding in about 75 feet per minute of material into the you know disc of the chipper so today we are because we have larger diameter stuff here we're going to be slowing it down and you might even see me do a little technique that i've been calling it like the bump stop where i will pull it back to feed in a little bit and then Oh, there we go. And I'll push it back to kind of back it off just to give the flywheel a little bit of a chance to uh, rev back up in speed and regain some RPMs. Uh, larger chippers like Bandits, Vermeers, more barks, they have a feature called Auto Cycle, which is a great um, feature and it does this automatically. It senses when the engine RPMs or the disc RPMs uh, slow down to a certain point and it'll stop the feed wheels, back the wood off a little bit let it regain its speed and then start feeding in again. Um, this Woodmax chipper does not have that, nor would I expect it to have it, especially at the price point. Um, but this essentially achieves the same thing. You can feed wood in and then push it back a little bit to let it regain some speed and then back. And I was just pulling a little too far. That's why I was getting locked up. But as you can see, it goes back and forth nice and smooth. Um, there's that wind again. Today I have my steel MS201 TC. This stuff is a little bit bigger um, and it is hardwood. So I'm gonna be using that in case there's any crotches or anything that won't 
um, easily go through the chipper, just make my life a little easier instead of using the Milwaukee hatchet. And then of course, I got my 3M work tunes. So without any further ado, let's fire up the chipper and we're gonna put all that wood that's in the back of the trailer into this pile of chips.
Okay guys, so you can see uh, I just fed in this long branch and I noticed that there was a little bit of a nub sticking off on one side and I didn't trim it off kind of on purpose because one, I wanted to see if the chipper would take it and two, I kind of knew it wouldn't and I had a feeling it might get stuck and it did. And this will give me the opportunity to show you how easy it is to unjam this chipper if it ever does get stuck. Now I'm gonna hold the camera. Let me take it off the tripod here. I'm gonna hold the camera and send it in there. And you can kind of see that nub off on the left side. It got stuck in the rail where the feed wheel, uh, you know, travels up and down because it's sticking out a little bit too far. Um, so it, it must be a little bit more than eight inches. Um, and this has happened before, and it took me a while to figure out how to get it unjammed, but now that I know how to do it, it's actually pretty easy. Um, it can be done with one person, however, it is easier to be done with two. Um, so now that the tractor's off, PTO has stopped moving, um, I'm gonna show you how to go ahead and unclog the Woodmax chipper. So the first step in unclogging the Woodmax chipper is this feed wheel has uh, downforce and pressure on it from these two gas shocks on either side. And the way that these gas shocks actually come off is this cool little clip here. You can see you pull that out and it, oh, sorry for the shaky camera. I usually use a screwdriver to do this. So it's kind of tough with one hand, but yeah. There it goes. It hinges out and that goes up like that. And then all you gotta do, I'm gonna put the camera in the tripod here. See if I can get it to focus in, there we go. So now that the little clip is out, you simply pull down on the gas shock a little bit. Wow, it is really windy. And pop this little pin out, pull this gas shock off to the side. Now we're gonna repeat the same process on the other side. Make sure you hold on to these little pins. So we're gonna pop this out. You take the pressure off of it with two hands, it kind of makes it easier. Wiggle that pin out and then pop that gas shock off that way. Now I'm gonna put the pins in my pocket here and you'll see this bar. This bar you put back in to these holes once you raise up the whole feed wheel. You raise up the whole feed wheel simply by picking it up. It's not heavy, you can hold it with one hand. Put this bar back in, there we go. And now the feed wheel is raised up in the air. You can see right there. And now let me take the camera back off the tripod. And you can see that the feed wheel is now raised up, plenty of light in there. And I can grab this piece of wood and simply slide it out. And that nub right there is what it was getting caught on. You can even see the little dent in it there and the black, you know, paint from where it got jammed in. So it's super easy. You know, if I wasn't filming and I had two hands, you can really like literally raise up the feed wheel in like under a minute. And this is the little channel that it was stuck in on the other side. So um, these chippers are great. However, they do have their downfalls. One of the downfalls is you really, when you're cutting your, your brush, you know, off the tree, or when I'm cutting the brush off the tree, you really want to make sure to try and make flush cuts um, or at least more flush than this and not leave these little nubs because they do just, you know, complicate the process and they can make the process a little bit more strenuous. Um, so when you cut, if you're just mindful of that and you know the capability um, of your machine or of your chipper in this case, um, you could save yourself a lot of headaches. But I'm glad that that piece, I'm glad I sent it through, one, and I'm glad, two, I was able to show you guys how to unclog it. Now, to put it back, it's just as easy. So I got the camera back on the tripod. I'm going to locate my two little pins. Um, if I can find the other one in my pocket, 
here it is. If I can get it out now. There we go. We got our two pins. Got my cotter pin. So I'm going to lift this up, take the pressure off, slide this rod out, let it gently fall back into place, put my rod back in. And this rod, when it's in the up position or in the top position, it doesn't do anything. It's just simply there for storage. Now I'm going to take my pin, I'm going to take my gas shock, press it down, put my pin in the hole, line up the holes, and that one's back in. Now I'm gonna take this one and do it to the other side. So here we are on the other side. Let me try and eliminate the glare here. Okay, there we go. Got my pin, got my gas shock going to depress that down it's amazing these little gas shocks they really do add a bunch of pressure I don't know what they're rated for but they're a lot stronger than you would think and there we go back in now we're ready to fire back up the tractor engage the PTO and finish chipping up Well guys, we got an empty trailer yet again. This is the little scraps and dirt pieces that are left over. And out of everything in that trailer, this was the only piece that I did not push through because it was just a little bit too big. It's a crotch as you can see there on the side. So it would have been tough. Um, so I just cut it off. I can always throw that in the burn barrel or you know the IBC tote, bonfire pit, whatever. Doesn't matter. Um, the chipper is off pto has stopped moving um so now at the end i always like to feed you saw i held up this one last piece of brush um i always like to save one piece of brush with some branches on it to send through at the very end to kind of clean out everything that's in between the feed roller which is right here and the actual disc which is right here this zone i like to call the dead zone because it nothing is happens in there that's the one spot it's in between the feed roller and the disc so it in order for that stuff to get fed into the disc to be chipped it needs something to push it through like more brush um, so at the very end I like to save one last piece or branch to push through to kind of clean out that dead zone and then I reverse the feed wheels and it kicks out all of this little stuff that's in there and I just like to go ahead and pull that stuff out. That way it doesn't get clogged up. 
the next time that I start to chip. Um, and let's take a look at the chips now. So that stuff was pretty big. So we will get some larger chips like this um, and like this, but most of it, I mean, is nice, fine, smaller stuff. Now, when you send with any wood chipper, you send a big piece through, it typically makes larger chips like these and it shoots them farther. So all of this stuff that got shot into the IBC toads and stuff, those pieces have more velocity, so they fly a little bit farther. They're generally a little bit larger, but um, as you can probably see, the chipper does handle large wood relatively easily, um, as long as the knives are sharp and everything's greased and everything. But you really do need, I've found, to slow it down at the minimum, if not stop you know, the feed wheels completely by kind of doing that bump stop method that I was showing you before. There were a couple instances where you might have heard or seen the chipper really die down and it almost uh, killed the tractor um, and, you know, like shut it off. But um, I was able to save it just by reversing these feed wheels. So that is an important, uh, you know, note when you are trying to chip to the max capacity of about eight inches. Um, in my opinion, you really do need to, if you're going forward, you need to reverse it and then stop and then you can keep going and reverse a little bit, stop, and then you can keep going. Um, I think it's just easier on the tractor, it's easier on the PTO shaft, it's easier on the chipper, just, you know, it's an investment, one of these machines, and I think it ought to be treated with care. Um, but you are totally able to chip up to eight inches. Um, it's not like they advertise eight inches, but they really recommend, you know, six inch softwoods. This was, eight inch, seven and a half inch, as you saw in the beginning, hardwood, sugar maple. Um, the birch is relatively soft compared to sugar maple, but it did a great job. So overall, I'm happy. I hope this video helped you guys that wanted to see the Woodmax MX8800 and the Kubota L3901 chip bigger stuff. All right, guys, it is super windy out. I'm not sure if you can hear anything that I've been saying. Um, but I'm gonna wrap up this video pretty quick. As always, please hit that like button if you like the video. If you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button. We just broke 1,900 subscribers this past week. Less than 100 to go to hit that 2,000 mark. That's a big mar milestone for me, big milestone for the channel. If we hit 2,000 subscribers in under a year, I think that would be fantastic. The channel's really starting to gain some momentum. We got a lot of cool things in the works new machinery, new settings, uh, you know, new projects going on. There's gonna be a lot in store this upcoming summer. So be sure to hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for all of that. Got any questions or comments, any requests for videos that you'd like to see. After all, this video was, I chose to do it because some of you asked to see the chipper chip up larger diameter hardwoods, so I did it. Um, so please put any questions, comments, or you know, requests for video in the comment section below. I'm Jake, this is Dude Ranch DIY. We'll see you here next time. Thanks so much for watching.